You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, CBS soap opera fans. This is Soap Dirt on YouTube, and we have got your Young and the Restless comings and goings for the first full week of May sweeps. There is so much happening, and we have got three big returns, and then we have got some key exits that we are going to see. If you haven't already, click subscribe, reach down, click that button so that you don't miss any of our Young and the Restless updates. We've got casting news, spoilers, promos, everything you need to stay current on your favorite CBS soap Soap opera, Young the Restless. If you like Bold and the Beautiful, we've got that. We've got Days of Our Lives. We've got General Hospital. We've got everything. Click subscribe so you don't miss a moment of your favorite soap action. Now, let's dig in to this episode of YNR Comings and Goings. The very first thing to talk about is the return of Tad Luckenbill as JT Halstrom. We are going to get him back, but probably not in the way that you want. If you are a longtime Young and the Restless watcher, then you know that JT. T. Hellstrom was a good guy. He was a good guy for most of his tenure on Young and the Restless. And then during British producer Mal Young's terrible tenure as showrunner, he decided, hey, I'm going to screw up a bunch of legacy characters. He didn't just screw up JT. He did a lot more than that. He did so much damage at the soap. That's my personal opinion. But one of the things that really hit longtime fans a lot was what Mal Young did when he took over as head writer and showrunner. And he just twisted JT's character into something unrecognizable and horrible and turned him into an abusive boyfriend. He was seeing Victoria Newman and he started getting really harsh with her. He was, you know, verbally abusing her. He was breaking her down. And then he started physically abusing her to the point that Nikki Newman hit him upside the head with a fireplace poker. They thought he died. They buried him in Chancellor Park. He dug out and then he kept tormenting everybody. And then of course it eventually came out, oh, he's got a brain tumor. I think the brain tumor thing might have come after Mal Young was fired. I'm trying to remember if Josh Griffith came in and cleaned up that mess or if that was Mal's plot from the start because he got fired pretty fast. People really didn't like him. Fans didn't really like him. So I can't remember if the brain tumor was Mal Young or if that was cleanup work done by Josh Griffith. If so, good work, Josh. It's hard to say that. A lot of us don't don't like the head writer or have some issues with some of his storylines, but we're going to see Tad Luck and Bill back this week. And the reason he's back is because Elena has reached out to him with Audra's help to invite him to come on her medical podcast. She wants to talk to him about his brain tumor and the behavioral issues that it caused. Just, you know, it's, it's a flimsy excuse. She just needs an excuse to reach out to him because what Elena really wants is for JT to come back to Genoa city and to distract Victoria, who is very actively trying to steal Nate away from Elena. And this week, as we talked about in our Young the Restless promo video, you can see it on our YNR playlist, is that Nate and Vicky do the deed and Elena finds out what they're doing and she just flips out and that's when she contacts JT and we are going to see him this week, but it's only going to be Tad Luckenbill appearing in a video call. He and Elena have a video chat and we just have to wonder, is this it? Is this all we're going to get a Tad Luckenbill? So far, there are not any official YNR spoilers and you know they're pretty tight-lipped about stuff. We just have to hope that we are actually going to get JT, but we might not. So if you love Tad Luck and Bill, watch for him this week in a video conference with Elena, and maybe they'll drop a hint about him actually coming to town. Another big return, two big returns we have this week are Yolanda Hamilton and Malcolm Winters. And the reason they are back is because they're doing another tribute to Neil Winters. Of course, that's Christoph St. John's character. The actor passed away tragically, and so they also wrote off his character. And there have been numerous tributes to him. And the one happening right now is the dedication of the Neil Winters Jazz Lounge at the Genoa City Athletic Club at the GCAC. That was where Phyllis died. Of course, she 
she's not dead and her memorial happened but it looks like there's going to be like a formal dedication to it and this is something that Lily and Devon are working on together and so two of their family members return if you don't remember them Yolanda Hamilton is the mother of Devon Hamilton his biological mother she was played by Debbie Morgan before but this time she's played by Shanae Lawson and if you don't remember she goes by the name Harmony now when she cleaned up her act and got her life together she felt like Harmony was a better name for the future so some people call her Yolanda some people call her Harmony we'll just call her Devon's mom also coming to town is Lily's biological father Devon's uncle the brother of Neil Winters and that is Malcolm Winters played by the incredibly hunky and talented Shamar Moore so we are going to see both of them back this week they'll be in and out they're not going to stick around too long but if you don't keep tissue by your side when you watch Young and the Restless you may want to grab a box because I'm sure this latest tribute to Neil Winters and Christoph St. John is going to be very sad and it's always hard to think about losing him both as a character a beloved character that's been on the show for a long time and of course for the actor who had such a troubled personal life and who died so tragically young So now let's talk about some exits. We've got three exits happening right now. We already saw Daniel Romilotti's daughter, Lucy Romilotti, leave. And Danny Romilotti had stuck around for Phyllis's service. And it looks like that we are going to be seeing the last of Michael Damien soon for a while. You know, he was gone for years. He comes back every now and then. So we didn't expect him to stick around. He may be uh, have a few more episodes during May Sweeps as we see see how Phyllis is going to try and unravel the mess she's made of her life. Uh, Noah Newman had some scenes. We had Rory Gibson on and he showed up at the big gala, but we're not really going to be seeing him anymore. And the same goes for Ali Nguyen, played by Kelsey Wang, and they are both going to be offset. They are not on contract anymore. They are on recurring. So, you know, we got them for like the baby shower and then the gala, things like that, but they are not sticking around. So to summarize, we have got Tad Luck and Bill back as JT. We've got Shanae Lawson and Shamar Moore back as Yolanda and Malcolm. And we've got Danny, Noah, and Allie heading out of Genoa City. If you haven't already clicked that subscribe button, reach down, click that button right now so you don't miss any of our Young and the Restless spoilers and news about your favorite soap opera. And we're heading into the first full week of May Sweep, so there's going to be so much happening. Don't miss any episodes. Check back here all the time for your latest soap spoilers and videos. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.